DJ Pro AI BPM tutorial. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys all about how to use the BPM in DJ Pro AI. In this video, we're talking all about BPM for the DJ Pro AI app for the iPad, so let's start right now. When you first open the app, you are gonna see this screen. We are in what the app calls classic mode. Now, this is the place where you will see the largest tempo slider, which is great because it makes doing small adjustments of the BPM, like going the 128, 124, it makes it really easy the bigger the tempo slider is. It's the same thing with controllers. Some controllers have much bigger tempo sliders and it makes it easier. Some controllers have really, really small ones like the DJ to go to touch. But having this access on the screen makes it really great and really easy to adjust the BPM. So if we just look at pro mode, it's significantly, uh, it's significantly shorter to go all the way up and all the way down with the tempo slider. So let's just go back to classic mode. Now, there is a couple of ways to use this and a couple of things you could adjust that I just wanna go over real quick. So if you move the tempo slider up or down, like anywhere that's not in the middle, and you wanna quickly get back to the original tempo of the song, you just double click the line and it'll snap it right back there. This little um, musical icon next to the tempo slider is called the key lock. I made a separate video on that, but basically what it does is when you adjust the BPM, it, it, if you do large increases or decreases of the BPM, it will adjust the pitch. So if you if you play a song much higher BPM, it will get really high pitch, kind of like Alvin and the Chipmunks. And if you slow it down all the way, it'll get like really slow. So by putting this on, it'll help reduce the effect of the high pitch or low pitch. So up here, we have a BPM menu. So you can see it says BPM 128. So this song is, the BPM is 128. Now, if you guys are using like songs like country music or classic rock and stuff, just because it says some BPM doesn't mean that it's going to be able to match up with other songs because any song made with like a real drummer or older songs that weren't produced on a computer, the BPM, it, it's hard for the app to read it. So this is mostly for like hip hop uh, and dance music, EDM and stuff like that. So this is 128 BPM. Now we click this menu and then we have a couple options. So there is BPM mode, which is this, and then there is tempo mode, which is right here. If you go to tempo, you can do a couple of adjustments, but let's just start with BPM. So the first thing that we could do is we can manually type in the BPM. So let's just make it 130. And now it'll change on the screen, the 130. This is good if you get really frustrated if you're using the app on your phone maybe or a smaller iPad that it might be hard to get to the exact BPM. So you could just come here and simply type it. It makes it really helpful. They give us the option to quickly half the BPM. And now this won't change how the song sounds. It won't make it faster. It won't make it slower, but it'll be able to, you'll be able to mix with a song. So two songs can only mix if they're the same exact BPM. But if you do one that's exactly double or exactly half, then that's a way you can mix songs with different genres. So this makes doing that trick a little bit easier. And then if you have to, you could easily double it. Another thing you could do is tap in the BPM. So let's say if you're using a song where it doesn't really, it's not really getting the beats down, you can manually tap your finger to the beat. Kind of like if you were just listening to music and tapping your finger on the desk, you could tap it on this button and then press apply and then it will change the BPM to whatever you were tapping. It's pretty cool. A lot of other DJ softwares always had this feature. So it's pretty cool that they have this feature in the app. So that's pretty much it. all you can do from that menu. But if we go over here, the tempo, we can, we have another place where we can do the key lock. We can manually adjust the BPM up and down like this, or we could use this slider here, which is the same thing as the tempo slider, slider that I showed you before. 
And then here is a pretty important part. So you could change the, the range. So at 8%, if we go all the way up, it'll only go to uh, from 128 to 138. And now if we go to 75%, it could go from 128 to 223. So just be mindful of that, that the higher you make the range, the harder it is going to be to get small incremental changes to the BPM. But also if it's at if it's only at 8%, then you can't do like really long beat mixes and using the sync button and stuff like that where you can get a transition going and do like a transition trick with the BPM if you I would say keep it at like 25 maybe 16 right there in the middle so you could adjust it good and then it doesn't really make it too hard to bring it to the BPM that you want and then also you could do invert some people are used to using invert inverted sliders so it gives you the option if you want to do that basically what it means is up is up is down and down down is up so that is what we could do from that menu over here. And now let's go to pro mode. So you get the, you get the tempo slider over here. Also the BPM will be shown on the jog wheel. So it's really cool that they let you know they added stuff to the jog wheel. A lot of controllers will show you stuff on the jog wheel. So it's really cool that they added that. So also, if you're looking and you see and you're on the screen with the record, the faster you bring up the BPM, the faster the record will spin. And then the slower you bring you bring it down, the slower the record was, will spin. And then if you have two songs, if you have a song on the other deck that is a different BPM, if you press the sync button once, it'll bring it to the exact same BPM. So this really helps if, if, if it's hard for you to move the tempo slider to the exact BPM, you could just simply, you could just simply press the sync button once and then you don't have to use sync. You could still do your mix manually if you just turn sync off after before you play the song. So thanks for watching. If you guys have any specific questions on anything in this video or anything else involving DJing on the iPad, let me know in the comment section. I try to get back to all the comments. Also, if you found value in this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I make these DJ tutorial videos several times a week. So if there's anything that you guys want to learn, just check the channel and I probably already made a video on it or I will be making one in the future. So thanks for watching.